Fubar. 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 Y'all got that right. Sir, I just, uh, I don't have a good feeling about this one. When was the last time you felt good about anything? Someday we might look back on this and decide that saving Private Ryan was the one decent thing we were able to pull out of this whole god-awful mess. Welcome back, moviegoers, to another edition of Going to the Movies. Today, we are not in France for the locations from Saving Private Ryan. We are in Ireland, at least I am right now. We're also going to be in England for many of the locations. They're going to be difficult today because there's a lot of farmland that we're going to have to try to get onto. But we'll see what we can get. We'll see what we can't get. I'm going to show you as much as I have found and as much as I can. So let's go ahead and get started. If you look up Saving Private Ryan locations, a lot of times it says Curraclo. So a lot of people will assume it's just Curraclo Beach down here. It's actually up here on Balanesker. So it was a hill of sand. It was like a dune, I guess, that they made here. And that's what all the soldiers were hiding behind. With the bunker up here, the guys up here. So let's match up this angle. Here's a matchup that turned out a little off, but I still wanted to show it to you. Ignore whatever I was pointing at there, but the movie's version of this frame shows most of the filming area for the part on the beach. And it's kind of mind blowing because the scene is on such a massive scale on screen, but in real life, it's a relatively small area. By the way, if you want to get to this spot, all you have to do is park here at Balanesker Beach Car Park, and then you take a short walk north. Let's talk behind the scenes. The numbers change a bit depending on where you get your information, but this scene took about a month to film and cost $12 million to make. There were supposedly 40 gallons of fake blood, 17,000 individual bullet squibs, and over 1,500 extras used for the sequence. Most of those extras were members of the Irish Army Reserve. Some other extras were actual amputees portraying soldiers who lost limbs. Steven Spielberg originally wanted to shoot at the actual Omaha Beach, but they've obviously got regulations on what's allowed to be filmed there, so it was up to him and his location scouts to find a beach that was as similar as possible. They looked for the right landscape, the right kind of sand, every detail you could think of, and I was originally going to talk about how meticulously planned the scene was. I was going to mention how well he keeps your attention with these micro stories, the, the way people die like throughout all this commotion. There's the guy that drowns before he reaches combat. There's the guy casually wandering around looking for his arm. And then this lucky and then unlucky guy who gets hit in the head twice. Well, apparently most of the scene really wasn't planned out at all. Spielberg had just released The Lost World and Amistad in the same year. And because of that, he didn't get as much time as he normally would to organize everything for this movie. He decided to use that lack of pre-production time to add to the chaos of the scene. So there were no storyboards at all. He did a lot of the handheld shooting on his own, like he was the one actually filming. And a lot of those micro stories that I mentioned, they were made up on the spot. All right guys, so now we're up on the ridge line from the beach and we're on private property, we're on a farm. We did get permission to come back here, so if you do want to come back here and take some matchup shots, make sure that you are allowed. This is a cool spot. It's where they built the headquarters after the fight at Normandy. And you have to look really closely in the background because the scenes are filled with actors. So look down here at the way the beach is shaped. It's like a triangle going up into the right. And then the way that land comes in here, that curve, that's where one of the bunkers was built. And then if you look up here at the hill, that's the best giveaway. You can see the darker green at the top of it. That is how we know this is the spot. So let's show you that matchup. The guy that led us onto the land, he said that he was here. His family owned the place when they filmed Saving Private Ryan. And he met Tom Hanks when he was about three years old. He said he doesn't remember it very well, but he's got pictures. One more thing to show you here, this one I also did not line up quite right, which you're gonna see is kind of a theme for this video. The shots from earlier in the sequence when they're still fighting is the opposite direction of the headquarters matchup, which you just saw. You still see the sandbags, the dog one exit, and the bunker, but mainly I wanted you to see this because there's a peak right here, and that is also visible in the movie shot. 
I think this scene had a big impact on me as a kid. I mean, it's considered by a lot of veterans as one of the most accurate depictions of World War II. And I remember, because I was nine or eight when this movie came out, my parents didn't want me to watch the entire thing, but on Memorial Day, my dad would sneak and let me watch the Normandy scenes, and it had a big impact. So for the most part, Saving Private Ryan was shot sequentially, which means they filmed it in the same order that the story happens. And that's why we're not too far from the beach right now. Right after they are assigned the mission of Saving Private Ryan, they walk through some French farmland, which is actually, like I said, not too far from the beach at all. And this is kind of the vantage point. It's not the exact one, because we're far away. But they're crossing in front of one of these tree lines here, and I'll show you some drone footage to prove it. Because look at this clump of trees right here. That was much shorter back when they filmed the movie, and you could see a big mansion back there. The mansion's still back there. The trees are just much taller and you can't see it. So on the drone, you see that, and then there's another house that was visible behind them that I can't see from here, but is on the drone as well. So this is where they're kind of giving the guy crap, the new guy, the translator, about writing a book about brotherhood when he hasn't seen any combat. And they talk about griping, where when you gripe, it goes up the chain of command. You don't gripe down. All right, guys, so that was it for Ireland. We are now in the countryside in England. And look at this. This could be the middle of America, some farmlands. And that is what they used it for. This is supposed to be Iowa in Saving Private Ryan. And look at this angle here. This is where the Ryan residence would have been, where his mother finds out that three of his brothers have died in battle. This shot always affected me when I was younger watching the movie. It's kind of a John Ford shot, shooting from inside of the house, out of the doorway, and the mother collapses because she knows exactly the news she is about to find out, though she probably doesn't know yet that it is three of her four kids that are gone. Notice the uh, driveway matching from this perspective as well as this tree line here and that little tree there. You move a little bit to the left, you see a little bit of the shot out of the window when she's in the kitchen. About the same view, but just wanted to show you this and watch the car turn around here. All right, England, I don't know what these things are called, but you have got to eradicate these things. I've been sliced up all week. Do we have these in America? They are just little spike bombs waiting for you to walk past. So a car just went over that way. They just passed, I thought I was gonna get in trouble and explain what I was doing, but they just waved and kept going. I think you can uh, ride your horses back here and stuff like that. The, f the laws with trespassing here are weird. I, I think you're allowed to kind of walk around the edges of fields and things like that. Don't quote me, but I will use my bit of ignorance to help me in finding the spots. Right here is where the house stood, by the way. It's pretty easy to find as it is the most open area once you get to the top of the zigzagging driveway. And down there is the curve to the right that we see the car coming up. Let's go ahead and move on. I was a little bit upset when I found out that three Saving Private Ryan locations were done out here at Tame Park, but it's all private. However, I was very excited to find out there was a public footpath out here, and here is the first location from this area, the church. Now, you don't see the outside, you just see the inside, which is sad because I can't get in there, but. This is where the movie kind of grinds to a screeching halt. It gives you a little room to breathe after all of the action and before all of the action coming up. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that it screeches to a halt, but that is where this scene happens. Giovanni Ribisi talks about pretending to be asleep when his mom got home from work. He didn't know why he did that. There's a conversation between Tom Hanks and Tom Sizemore. You know, they're just kind of chilling out all inside there. How great would it be 
to go in and see the inside. Something I noticed while editing this part is that you can see the screenshot, the windows in the background and the door below it matching up with what I'm seeing on the outside. Of course, we know this is the church, but it's always cool to confirm. You've got the three-tiered window. There's that stained glass design right in the middle and then that distinct door shape below it. Kind of dark in the screenshot, but it is there. Now let's go over to what I think is the coolest location. made it up the hill, I figured out where the machine gun nest was situated. I'm going to show you the matchup shots of this uh, pretty pivotal scene. You know, this is where it comes to a head, all the questioning of Tom Hanks' leadership. They have a big blow up and uh, Giovanni Ribisi's character, we lose him. Uh, they let the German guy go. So a lot of stuff happens here. Let's walk you through it. So the machine gun nest was just here to my left. What we can match up is the naked part of that tree branch sticking up out of the middle of the bigger tree in this shot, that branch shape is still exactly the same. All right, guys, check out the landscape here. You see it in the background of the shot where they captured the German. He's got his hands up. He's up against the sandbags. And what you'll notice is the tanner part of the farmland back there, it sort of curves around and to the left. That is still visible, as well as that one tree that is sort of on its own in this smaller grass patch. Ridge line way off in the background still matches. I think our main difference here is that the trees in the foreground have grown much taller. Here's some more landscape to check out if you look in the background. This one's a little more convincing because you can see the back, far, far back ridge line matching up behind the guys as they make the German dig his own grave, which they don't end up using, as you know if you've seen the movie. I don't know if this is the exact right shot because I see more trees than were in the movie screenshot and also the screenshot has chopped off the top of the tree which I'm using as a reference but this is pretty much the angle where we see Private Ryben, not to be confused with Private Ryan, the guy who is from Brooklyn, he's standing there and he's looking up as they are continuing to dig the grave. It's just a really nice shot so I definitely wanted to match this one up. Here's another tree that we can match up. The way it grows kind of up and to the left from this perspective, you see that behind Tom Hanks in this shot. We see it a couple times. Anytime the camera is facing in this direction. All right, guys, so the third and final thing shot here at Tame Park was the ambush scene. They happened upon it, a, a group of Americans ambushing a German vehicle. And I think it could have been right here. Now, this little tree that's a different kind of tree than the rest of them, right there to the right, and the shape of this one here as it curves around up and to the left and then down. It's the only sort of area around here that looks like what I was seeing in my screenshots that I took. That's a complete guess. I'm not willing to say that definitively is the spot, but you can see pretty much everywhere out here in this field is very similar to that. You get the vibe. We know it was filmed here, but uh, look at the yellow flowers. All the buttercups make it feel the same, though I'm pretty sure the yellow flowers in the movie were something else. They were much larger flowers. But yeah, that's Tame Park. There are two other locations I know of that we didn't go to because of time, really a two in one, but don't worry because we didn't miss much at all. The first is Newville. This is where they meet up with Paul Giamatti. There's a standoff with some Germans after an old wall falls down. Also Vin Diesel trying to help the little girl being handed off by her parents. And then Barry Pepper sniping the German sniper right through the scope. The other location is Rommel, and scenes here include the guys sitting around with Private Ryan, sharing stories, and of course the battle at Rommel with the Alamo Bridge being the key factor in that fight. I should note for anyone that doesn't know that despite being inspired by actual battles, these two did not really happen as Neuville and Rommel are both fictional towns in France. Either way, both locations were filmed on the same gigantic set from different angles on the unused, at the time, Hatfield Airport. It's actually the same place where they built sets for Band of Brothers, the miniseries produced by Spielberg and Tom Hanks, but the whole area has been redeveloped now, so I wouldn't have had much to show you. But if you're making your own pilgrimage to the Saving Private Ryan locations, there is a historical marker that talks about the old airport, and supposedly the ditch they dug to make the river is still there. 
And that's going to do it for Saving Private Ryan locations, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to watch another, click here. If you'd like to watch all of our locations videos, they are located in this playlist. And we will see you in the next one. By the way, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We'll see you around.